Everybody is his perch. Uh, why'd you get into comics? Like, what what got you there? I, do we spend a lot of time talking about you know this creator, that creator, this comic, this comic. I, I've made a thousand plus videos. I don't think I've ever asked this question to you. I mean, I, I think it kind of threads into other things, but why why comics? Of all the things you could have done with your life, why? Did, no, wait a minute. I don't want to ask it that way. That doesn't sound right. I, I just it's a curious question because. Um, since it was, so here, let me, let me explain some of the background with this. I'm having a conversation, uh, about an hour or so ago, uh, with a friend who knows that I do the comic book channel and all the rest. And he goes, I, I, I'm just surprised that comics still exist. Like who's buying this stuff? Like it, we, like with all the, with all the game, you know, you've got games, you've got movies on demand, you have, you have Netflix, you have Disney plus, you have, yeah, you have anything. I mean, hell you, you know, what, what is YA? YA is animal crossing. And you know, then you mature on up to call of duty or whatever the hell you're, you're playing. Um, you know, I, it, what, what's the point of comics when you've got all this entertainment? I mean, comics made a whole lot of sense back in the seventies and the eighties when, you know, you didn't have handheld video games. You didn't have mobile phones. You didn't have any of that. So what was your entertainment? Your entertainment was going to the movie theater. If, you know, there was something on and there, there often wasn't. Or it was kind of Saturday morning cartoons or comics. Like that, that's what you got. That's what you, that was, what was you're into. But in, in 2020, why comics? And I, I think, you know, first off, I think that's a, a fairly limited point of view. I think entertainment comes in a lot of different forms. And I think a lot of people enjoy a lot of different things. I, I enjoy video games when I have time. Um, I do stuff on my phone more because that's, that's usually where, what I can do. You know, if I'm driving around in heavy traffic, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to read a paper comic book behind the steering wheel. I'm going to play a mobile game. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, that's, I'm going to record videos, of course. No, I, I just... Um, you know, it's, I, I've heard this said before, when you've got Pokemon Go, what do you need the Avengers for? And it's such a, such a weird comparison. Again, I, I don't think, I don't think it works out that way. And I, I watch my daughter, my daughter, of course, has grown up. Both of my daughters uh, have grown up in the digital age of iPads and, and switches. And I'm the sucker who buys them everything that uh, I can get my hands on mostly because I want to play it myself. Uh, but I, you know, they, they still like comics. You know, my older daughter will, I, I will walk in and my younger daughter is, is on Roblox and my older daughter is reading a comic book, a paper comic book. And I'm like, oh, you don't want to play your Switch? And she's like, no, I'm, I'm tired of the Switch. I want to read comics. This is a comic book I was looking forward to. And especially when I get like the, when I get come home with uh, one piece, of uh, one of the volumes, um, she will neglect tablets and other things for, for one piece. You know, my younger daughter's not quite there yet, but if I if I come home with like a Disney princesses comic, she will read that over going to a screen. I, I don't think that I've done anything particularly special as a parent to try and steer them that way, but I mean, it, it still is a draw. But it gets this question for for you: um, why why comics for you? What got you there? What brought you to the table? What comic? What story? What moment in your life? made you think, you know what? I want to start spending $4.99 on 22 pages of Marvel Comics. I, <laughs> Sorry, I can't help but be sarcastic with some of these questions. Um, but it's, it's, it's how I dole the pain of not having a store right now and, and the fact that I've got mountains and mountains of comics collecting up that I can't sell. Uh, at, at any rate, uh, for me, you know, what was it for me? Obviously, I did grow up in a time where I didn't have electronics you know, close at hand. I was fascinated by visual storytelling. I don't know if I'm the same as other people, but to see kind of these images, these pictures of these characters and to see them in, in all different poses, all different, you know, interactions, all different scenarios to have this, this fantastic world where they could have any costume, any outfit, any, any, you know, uh, any display of themselves and their powers and, and what they were. And then combined with that, you know, all of these, these, some could fly, some could teleport. And how do you draw the teleporting? How does that, that be rendered? I remember thinking to myself many times, and I still kind of do that. There's just so much you can do on the comic page that you can't do on TV or the movies at the time, you know, special effects, things like star Wars blows your mind with the kind of amazing special effects. It was, it was meant to pull off, but it was nothing compared to what was going on in the pages of, 
you know, of Teen Titans or the X-Men or Legion of Superheroes. They had things going on, on those pages that you couldn't even hope to accomplish on the screen. And now, many years later, you can. Obviously, you have superhero movies, but still, the world of comic books, to me, still seems bigger. It still seems like there's more you can do, more things to explore, more characters, more moments, more anything. You know, you do you want to go back and tell a flashback? You can do that at any point. You don't have to worry about, you know, contracts and actors and aging, or you don't have to worry about digitally kind of trying to touch them up, you know, and you didn't, you don't have to worry about any of that. You can just do whatever it is you want. And that's the magic of, of comics. That's what comics is able to provide to us is this, this window into another world that for me, uh, can't be touched. And it's probably one of the reasons why I roll my eyes and I suspect others are the same when the comic book features, you know, four or five panels of characters like sitting on a couch and talking. It's that is something you can do on TV. That is something you can recreate in the movies, especially if most of the page is taken up with word balloons or, you know, if the heroes are sitting down and eating food, you know, they can do that. That's a scene that can translate easily to movies. And I, I want to see bigger than life. I want to see things I can't see in the movies. Now, I, I, not every panel has to be, you know, Jack Kirby, you know, things crackling right out of the page. But there is that element to me of being able to see a world I cannot see anywhere else. Only comic books can bring me that world. And it's still true. Even, even though movies and, and shows and everything else come an amazing long way, and I'm, I'm fascinated by the visual effects and the storytelling you can do there as well. I think it's really, really cool. You can still have an iconic looking Wolverine for 50 years who does not age. I think that's a plus. Every now and then I hear people either in the comic industry or customers uh, talk about how, you know, ah, we really got to reconcile time. We've really got to make all this work. We've really got to figure out what the sliding scale of continuity is. And to me, I was like, no, you're missing what makes comics comics. You're missing what makes them great. You don't have to worry about that stuff. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have them age on the page. Why would you do that? What is the point of it? Do you really think that a, a comic reader who's watching the Silver Surfer fly across galaxies, who's watching Deathstroke manipulate and, and, and take advantage of the Titans and, and put them in a, in a bad situation, a legion of superheroes in the far off future, being able to do anything and, and have you know a myriad of powers, fighting crazy threats, we can only imagine. In that world, who cares if they're aging on chronological time? Who cares? Does it, does it matter remotely? It doesn't to me. Now, different people, different strokes, right? That's why I asked the question the way I did. What got you into comics? What was it that, that brought you to the table? Because I also think there's a little bit of a key to understanding each other a little bit better when we recognize why we came to comics. There's, you know, a, 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 you know, a different friend of mine she got really involved in Scott Pilgrim. She loved that book. She loved Brian O'Malley. And, and she just really, that to her, that opened up this life of kind of visual storytelling and visual gags and, and you know, this, this kind of, of a way of, of having a picture tell an emotion. That's the way she describes it. And she loves comics like that. And to her, you know, when I've pointed out like, Hey, have you checked out the great darkness saga? Have you seen, uh, you know, the Dark Phoenix of it. Have you, have you seen comics like that? It holds zero interest to her because the reason she got to comics, the reason she came to the table and, and got into this world is through Brian O'Malley and Scott Pilgrim. That's, that's what she wanted. And I think if you reckon, if you could, if you could ask somebody basically, Hey, why, why, why did you come to comics or what is it that, what, what is it that got you excited? What, it, what opened up that door of imagination for you? then it really kind of tells you a lot about what they're going to buy, what they're going to like and dislike. And it, 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 I mean, it, it answers a lot of questions. Why is it that some people rave about that issue of Marauders where Storm stole the knife from Wakanda, where, you know, if you're a longtime X-Men reader, uh, that comic sucked. But if you are coming at it from maybe a, 
a kind of indie comic scene where you you value you know what got you into comics was the emotion and and some of these things on the page then yeah maybe this makes a whole lot of sense maybe that is the comic maybe that is tapping into kind of the origin and the nature of what you enjoy about comics so anyway that's that's the question for you and it's what i'd love to see you know you let me know in the comments below what what why do you what do you like about comics what got you into this what what is it that you look for when you pick up a comic and what how did it begin what was a comic that first caught your imagination first opened up that different world and made you think yeah i need to go back and buy more of these i need to get more of this i'm, I'm not done what is it what what was it for you I'm i'm curious let me know in the comments below um, hey, if you don't mind, like, subscribe. If you enjoyed this, this what I do here, that's always fun. But most importantly, I'd, I'd love to, I'd love, to, I'm, a, I'm more interested in your comments than anything else. Don't like, just give me a comment. Let me know what got you into comics. What do you like about it? And, and what, what keeps you around? Thanks for listening.